Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for April 24th, 2023. This is the time of the week where we get together and talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is open to everyone and hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join the server anytime by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel, and there are many other channels uh, around electronics as well there. Um, this meeting typically happens Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite disc ca or favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a notes doc to accompany the meeting and the recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, after each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest doc uh, so that you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates uh, in the document for us to read during the meeting. Uh, this meeting is held in five parts. The first is community news. This is a brief overview of uh, all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python and microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. Third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is Status Updates. A status update is an opportunity to report what you've been up to, take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week and what you plan on doing in the coming week. Uh, the fifth part and the final part is In the Weeds. This is a chance to just have any discussion that we need to have, uh, more longer form stuff. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something that uh, you've added to the notes talk ahead of time. That covers how the meeting will go. Um, I'll move on to community news and switch my document and take a timestamp. OK. I got my radio voice today. Um, 251, community news. Uh, first up, uh, PyCon US uh, happened uh, the previous weekend. Um, like over the weekend, <laughs> um, is happening in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, April 23rd to, 21st to the 23rd, and development sprints are today through Wednesday. Eight different CircuitPython team members have been there hosting events. Katni and Jeff will be present along with a few well-known community members. Uh, they've they did open spaces over the weekend during the conference. Um, it's a chance for people to play around with CircuitPython via the Circuit Playground Express. And then starting today, uh, Katni will be hosting three days of development sprints from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, today through Wednesday. The location will be determined through the, uh, during the conference. The sprints are an opportunity to contribute to the Py CircuitPython project on the Python side of things through code and documentation on the CircuitPython libraries. Everyone is welcome. There will be all, still be all of the introduction to CircuitPython hardware, so there will be opportunities for folks at any level to participate. And Katni says, if you're attending, please let us know in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord, or come find us around the conference. We'd love to meet up. We're looking forward to PyCon US 2023, and we hope to, uh, you are too. See you there. Um, and if you are not there, uh, just be aware that uh, there was a number of folks that made comments on issues for the sprints. So it looks like they're going, and they're going well. So please uh, be responsive to those folks if, if they add you as a reviewer. Um, and then some news about PyCon US uh, 24 and 25, 2024 and 25. Um, they'll be held in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from May 15th to the 23rd in 2024. And also in Pittsburgh, May, uh, May 14th through 22nd in 2025, which is mind boggling that that's a year. Um, for those of you paying it, well, that have followed PyCon US, um, Pittsburgh was actually supposed to be, I think, 2020 and 2021. 
um, but the pandemic threw a wrench in those plans, so they, they're going back to Pittsburgh for that, which will be great. All right, next up, time code. Um, work progresses on using an Adafruit Feather DVI with CircuitPython. Um, in the, yep, thank you for, for the link. There's a, a video of Turtle Logo running nicely on the Feather DVI with CircuitPython. Lady Ada rummaged through CircuitPython project led tan leaders my GitHub repository branches to find this build of CircuitPython with DVI output support. Uh, now you can treat any HDMI monitor as a display for CircuitPython. For example, above she is running the Turtle demo and showing make that shows uh, making cool graphical shapes, uh, but to a display on your desk via the Feather RP2040 with DVI. Ripple also appears on the screen. How fun is that? And that's actually merged into main, so you can get it from absolute newest now as well. Um, OK, another time code. Awesome MIDI and game controller with CircuitPython. Um, Christopher Stevens has had built the most remarkable MIDI controller based on an Adafruit tutorial by John Park. Christopher has taken this from a 4 to a 77 out of 10. <laughs> he writes, this dual three-axis joystick hosts us, fe features two microcontrollers, an Adafruit Metro Grand Central M4 for all the buttons and joysticks, with the exception of the Neo sliders and Neo keys managed by a Feather RP2040, which is pink. Uh, Grand Central was great for all the inputs and timers for LED fades. Uh, Feather RP2040 manages the I2C reads separately as it offered the cool factor, yet was a bit slower in reads per second than direct inputs handled by the Grand Central. This turned out well for gaming purposes for fast controls with the upper controls not needing the speed uh, less used. The game control sends out low latency MIDI signals which can be converted to joystick controls with an app like MIDI to VJoy. This is uh, TBD still exploring rocking as a MIDI controller so far. Maybe I'll make a flight sim demo while also performing music at the same time. Uh, both boards communicate with each other via UART at a basic level, syncing uh, when the center ship power button is pressed, the cool pulse in the video, and to sync the continuous rainbow color rotations in all NeoPixels. It does use utilize CircuitPython, super fun in this project. It's the third thing. <laughs> I'll have to watch that. I haven't actually watched it. Um, OK, so the newsletter details. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, Edit next week's draft on GitHub. It's the github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter repository, and there's a drafts folder in there. You can submit, submit a pull request, uh, but you can also tag a tweet with hashtag circuitpython on Twitter, or post on Mastodon with hashtag circuitpython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And uh, we love links and, and hints and tips and tricks for that, so please uh, feel free to do that. OK. <clears throat> Next up, we have the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a uh, statistical overview of the health of the project and its subparts. Um, so we'll start with overall numbers, and then we'll go kind of through the core libraries and Blinka. And I think um, if anybody wants to volunteer to read libraries and or Blinka, please drop it in the note stock, because I think both Katni and Melissa are out. Um, but I'll start with overall in the core. So overall, uh, we had 31 pull requests merged from 20 different authors. So new names for me are uh, Furbrain, Ethchill, Kin and Casa, Rich123, C Darius, DG Nuff um, are all new names for me there. Um, so thank you to all of our authors for um, those pull requests. We had nine reviewers, which is awesome, and, and more than I think we normally have. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, thank you to them. Uh, as always, we need more reviewers to support more authors. So thank you to both our reviewers and authors. Uh, we had 13 closed issues by 10 people and 24 open by 21 people. So we're definitely net up uh, 
11. We're up 11, and we've had a lot of people involved. 21 seems seems like a lot, so that's great, too. Um, okay, I'm going to read the core, and then we'll go to Foamy Guy for the libraries. Um, so for the core, we had 15 pull requests merged from 11 different authors. So this is a pretty good number, too. So thank you to all of our authors. We had... <laughs> DJ Devin 3 says, 20 authors, is that a new record? That's a, a lot of new contributors. Um, it's definitely up there. Well, 21 people doing issues is a lot to me, too. Um, we should go back and parse all these all these stats and, and graph them. Um, oh, and I should say that these stats are for the previous week. Um, and we do actually capture them every night. Uh, okay, so for the core... 11 authors, 4 reviewers on the core, so thank you to all those folks. We have 30 open pull requests, which is a bit more than I like to see, um, because I, I tend to like to keep it on to a single page, which is 25. Um, a number of those are draft, um, and a number of those have to do with development boards, so if you happen to have particular boards, um, take a look at those and see if you can't help test and, and get those checked in. Uh, reviewing is awesome and testing is awesome. Issues-wise for the core, we had 8 closed issues by 6 people and 11 opened by 10 people for a total of 630 open issues, which we've been pretty stable at. Um, Dan and I, uh, not last week, but the week before, went through and, and did some triaging. Uh, we used milestones to, to kind of inform the Adafruit-funded folks' priorities. So if there are other issues that you'd like to pick up as a community member, we're happy to support you doing that. Uh, but these milestones kind of are meant to inform our work prior prioritization for those of us that are paid by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, we have zero open issues for 8.0.x, which is kind of the most urgent stuff. Um, 8.05 has been pretty stable, which has been great. Uh, our next kind of feature release will be 8.1. It has eight open issues. Um, and then we have 27 open issues for 8xx, which are kind of like somewhat urgent things. Um, that we'd like to get to. Uh, 9.0 is going to be our, our major kind of the major releases also may break APIs um, and we have 25 op open, open issues for that um, and we'll get there kind of once 8.1 is done. Uh, we have eight issues not assigned to milestone when the script ran so we'll have to take a look at those and triage those as well. And with that I'm going to ask Tim to read the library section. All right, yep. Uh, so this section is about the CircuitPython libraries. That's going to be all the repos that start with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore. Uh, these libraries are the Python code that allows you to interact with various different sensors and devices and things of that nature. Uh, across those libraries for the past week, we had 15 pull requests merged. Uh, there were eight authors for those 15 pull requests. Uh, a couple of the names that were newer to me uh, were DJ Nuff, uh, ETH Chill, uh, and 2BNDY5. Um, thanks to those folks who are perhaps either new or less frequent um, contributors. Um, there were five reviewers across those pull requests, so thank you to the reviewers. Um, Thank you. I'll say uh, in particular, it's uh, nice to see Keith DeeE's name pop up in the review list here. Uh, thanks for uh, to him and as well as everyone else who reviewed in the following week, uh, or the past week, I should say. Um, of the merged pull requests, the oldest was 16 days old, and the newest was just one day old. So uh, keeping up mostly with uh, newer PRs this week. Um, there were... 45 open pull requests, uh, or I should say there are currently 45 open pull requests remaining. Uh, of those, the oldest is uh, 937 days, and the newest is down to just one. So uh, if you perhaps do have one of the older open PRs, and if you are uh, in need of help or anything like that, uh, feel free to leave a comment or ping anybody on one of those if you've got it open. Um, there were four closed issues by four people and 10 opened issues by nine people. Uh, there are remaining open 618 issues currently. Uh, of those, 73 of them are marked as good first issues. Uh, if you'd like to 
uh, get started contributing to CircuitPython, you can head over to circuitpython.org slash contributing. That page is going to list out all of the open issues as well as pull requests. Uh, the ones that are labeled good first issue, uh, there is a filter at the top of the page you can use to find those. Those are the ones that have been identified as uh, not necessarily needing a whole lot of prior experience for folks to get started on. So if you're newer and wanting to um, get started with contributing, that's a good way to do it. Um, as far as the uh, PyPI weekly download stats for libraries, um, in the past week we had uh, 99,301 PyPI downloads uh, of over 310 libraries. Um, the top 10 list is looking pretty standard. I would say the ones that um, stand out to me as maybe not on there every single week are the Ethernet library, uh, WizNet, um, maybe PCA 9685. Uh, I think the rest of those tend to hover pretty close to the top of the list fairly typically. Uh, there is a list of uh, the libraries that were updated in the last seven days. Um, you can see those in the notes doc if you'd like to uh, check in on what those latest updates were. Um, and that is all for the libraries. Thanks. Thanks, Swimming Guy. All right, next up, we're going to ask Dan to read Blinka stats. OK, thanks. OK, so Blinka is a compatibility layer library for CircuitPython so that CircuitPython code can run on single board computers like the Raspberry Pi and also on top of MicroPython, and also sometimes on host computers. So um, in the past week, we had uh, a single pull request merge by one author, Mathis and L, uh, reviewed by maker Melissa. There are seven open pull requests right now. Um, a few are really old, and some are really new, like about half and half. There are one issue, was on one issue closed by one person and three opened by three people. There are currently 95 open issues on Adafruit Blinka. There were uh, 13,968 PyPy downloads in the last week, which is kind of amazing. And um, there were 15,945 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month. We are now supporting 101 boards under Blinka. And that's it for Blinka. Thanks, Dan. All right, next up we have Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks in our community for the awesome work that they're doing. And also, to, it functions as a way for us to reinforce the things that we value as a community. So I will start, and then we'll go down the list of folks that are listed in the notes doc. As always, um, if you're unable or un if you would not like to speak or are unable to speak, uh, feel free to put notes in the notes doc. Just make a comment there that says that you'd like them read out. Um, or they're text only. Um, I'm happy to do that, and that way we can have more people participate, which is always good. Um, so I'll start, and then we'll go down the list. So my hug reports this week are one to David Glove and Jay Posada 202020 for testing the DVI output on the Feather. Um, thank you to D Quadros for a detailed issue pointing out that we don't, didn't support little endian addresses that are used on some e-paper display ICs. Um, and lastly, uh, uh, hug report to W. Tamura, Bergdahl, Andy Bing, and J. Posada Posada 2020 for their prompt translations of a new error message. I saw this PR come in today, and I think it's just very, very cool um, that we have uh, a number of translators that are very responsive to us adding new strings, uh, error strings in particular, to CircuitPython and making sure that they're available in people's languages. Um, so thanks to them. Next up, let's go to Dan. OK, thanks. Um, so thanks to Mikhail Pakusa for uh, some security fixes and other fixes to the HTTP server library. Um, thanks to Deshi Pu, who uh, sort of instigated some particular aspects of those security changes. Thanks to Anecdata who tested them, and thanks to Foamy Guy for reviewing uh, those changes. And thanks to you, Scott, for the Pico DVI work, which looks really great, great demo and useful. And thanks to uh, Jeff, Katni, and Tectric for representing Sir PyCon <laughs> at PyCon. Okay. Thanks, Dan. All right, next up, I have notes from David. 
who says, a hug report to myself for bringing DVI output to CircuitPython, um, and a hug report to Neurodoc for turning my absolute mouse experiment into a community library, which is github.com slash Neurodoc slash CircuitPython underscore absolute underscore mouse. Now everybody can use it. Thank you both for that. Uh, and next up is DJ Devin. I can't hear. Can other people hear DJ Devin? No, no, sorry. Okay, I usually can. We'll wait until we get a... All right, well, I'll start reading, and if DJ Devin 3 wants to interrupt me, that's cool. Um, so DJ Devin 3 says, uh, <laughs> they say, apparently my mic isn't working. Okay, I'll read it off. Uh, DJ Devin 3 says, uh, hug, hugs to Foamy Guy for responding to a time-sensitive issue. Hug report to Tammy Makes for advice using Kevlar string as a fail-safe for my sewer bot. Hug report to Ed Keys, Spavla, Katni, and Dan H for helping with Git CLI. Hug report to Anecdata and Neurodoc for the positive encouragement and help in Discord. Hug to John G for his educational CircuitPython videos. Hug report to Mad Bodger for hardware design advice. Uh, Melissa dealing with a move this week. Hope everything goes smoothly. Hugs to Katney Jepler, Keith E. e. Tectric uh, for representing Adafruit and CircuitPythonistas at PyCon this year. And uh, hug report to myself, Tan New, HDMI out. What? Can't wait to play with it. Uh, thanks. I hope I read that off right. Uh, thanks, DJ Devon3. Uh, next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, hug reports for me this week. Thank you to uh, Retired Wizard and Dan, uh, who both helped point me in the right direction to figure out how to replicate a specific warning I was trying to get during a build. Um, echoing what um, Dan mentioned before, uh, Mikal Pakusa uh, has implemented some great security enhancements to the HTTP server library around which files it will and won't uh, serve. So hug report to them as well as everybody who was a part of that discussion on Discord a week or so ago. Uh, hug report to Jose David uh, for verifying the uh, data sheet, uh, verifying in the data sheet some specific information about the delay uh, needed after resetting on a SI7021 um, temp I think it's a temperature sensor, yeah. Uh, and thank you also to Keith the EE for uh, reviewing the PR with those changes once it was in. Um, thank you to uh, Mark Gambler, a uh, hug report this week, for working on um, the enhancements to GIF support uh, with the addition of Palette. I'm excited to try that out. Uh, hug report to KVC0, uh, the uh, primary author of Vector.io. Uh, they popped up to answer some questions um, in... Uh, recent PR in the core and uh, help explain some things that I was not understanding. So thanks to them and a group hug to everybody. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right, next up we've got notes from Jepler. Uh, hot off the press, I should say. Um, Jepler says, We are at CircuitPython Sprints Day 1, and the number of people here is amazing. All of us here are working to get everybody going, whether that's extending the open spaces and letting them learn on Circuit Playground Expresses, or starting to work on issues in the libraries. Group hug from us here at PyCon. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up, I've got notes from Jose Davi, uh, who says, a hug report to Scott, myself, for the work on DVI, amazing work. Hugs to myself and David Glove for helping me better understand the DVI implementation and figure out what I was doing wrong. Hug report to Furbrain, 2BNDY5 Neradoc for adding new libraries to the community bundle. Um, hug to 2BND5 for helping me maintain the Sphinx immaterial theme, a gorgeous theme that now I am starting to use. And lastly, a hug to Neradoc for help for finding a bug in my slider library. Next up, I've got notes from Neradoc, uh, who says, hug to Jose David for the community bundle PR mergings, group hug to the Discord helpers crew, and group hug to the great community. And last up, we've got hugs from Tectric, uh, who says, hug report to Katni, Jepler, and Keith the EE for an amazing time at PyCon this year. It's been an absolute blast hanging out with you. 
everyone sprinting with CircuitPython this year. I'm thrilled to be helping out in person today. And Tan Newt for hosting an Intro to CircuitPython event for the Python, Boston Python Working Group next month. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> Somebody else is. Um, I, it, maybe Dan is. I just joined when I saw a notification go out. So. Not me either, right? <laughs> First I've heard, okay. <laughs> yeah, I will not be in Boston next month. Sorry to break it to you. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's somebody enthusiastic about CircuitPython. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it for Hug Reports. Um, apparently I'm going to Boston. Um, uh, status updates. Status updates is the next section we, uh, we've got going on here. It works just like Hug Reports where I'll start and we'll go around. Uh, kind of around the room, uh, the folks that are in the Discord chat and who have put notes in the note stock. Um, this is a chance to talk about what you've been working on in the past week and kind of what you're planning on working on in the coming week. It's a great way to just have a... a that might be John G. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, John G is also in the Boston area. Um, oh. I think Dan corrected it to Scott Gustafson. Just not me, somebody else. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, status updates around the room. They're great for uh, collaborating. So if somebody's working on something that you may have been working on previously, um, I, it's really good to give tips and tricks and also just be like, hey, I'm interested in that too. So I will start and we'll go through the list. So I'm... Uh, the Pico DVI support is merged into CircuitPython. Um, I already looked into Jose David's bug. He and he figured it out. Um, the DVI PR also included a bug fix for the C stack limit checking. This has to do with uh, the C stack limit checking causes the recursion errors that you see. Um, and it's meant to make sure that your C stack doesn't overwrite a memory that's being used by other stuff or for other stuff. Um, and so I found a found an issue with that, and that's also in that DVI PR. Um, I've polished up a community member's PR for adding frequency setting on the RP2040. Uh, it's ready for re review, and I think we'll get reviewed by Jeff when he's back from PyCon. Um, the DVI stuff already changes the frequency setting on the CPU, so this is just a way to do it without doing DVI. Um, I have a PR out to add little Indian support for little Indian addresses on the SSD 1675, 1680, and the 1681 ePaper displays. Um, a year or two back, we updated all of, a lot of, a lot of the displays we could buy had these newer controllers. Turns out they have little Indian addresses, um, which we weren't doing properly. So we had people uh, not being able to um, correctly render on the ePaper displays. Um, yeah, and this frequency setting will both do underclocking and overclocking uh, on the RP2040. Uh, for the Pico DVI, it is overclocked for sure. Um, I have a PR out, which I think might have gotten merged, um, but I haven't checked, to fix the RP2040 idle timing when off USB. I think Naradoc filed this issue where if you're not, I found it when, it w when you weren't on USB, the five second delay between blinks wasn't working correctly. Um, and so I have a PR, had, a, had a PR to fix that. And then um, next on my list is I ha have so, uh, a good chunk of IMX RT related work um, that I need to get pull requested uh, so that it doesn't get any more stale than it already is. So that's kind of like my main thing this week. Um, and with that, we'll go to Dan. Okay, so um, last week, uh, some folks from Scilabs merged a major, like a whole new uh, directory under the ports directory for Scilabs chips. And that was a great amount of work. It turned out that they ended up merging in a bunch of zip files of some binaries and of, uh, from their IDE tools. And so uh, I had to undo that and like perform a little surgery on the Adafruit Circuit Python. Uh, repo, but basically it was, we did it, I did a, um, a push minus F at the last, right, right, right away so that it wouldn't get too messed up. 
in terms of what people were pulling and mess up the history. So thanks to the people in Discord who uh, helped me out uh, think through that. Um, there was an I2C patch in ESP IDF for ESP32 S3 and various C something boards like C3. And I had hoped that maybe it would fix some of the problems we saw with the um, weird, the chips that have trouble uh, with uh, I2C on ESP32 S3, but it did not. So we'll just, too bad. Every there, every few weeks, there's one of these like hopeful, hopeful fixes, and it doesn't work uh, necessarily. So we'll we'll just incorporate this the next time we uh, update our uh, which which version of ESP IDF we're doing. I made a board definition for a new board, which will be very interesting, and you can look at the PRs to see which board that might be. <laughs> but it's top secret. It's not even top secret yet. It's so secret. So um, I'm doing a bunch of reviews and bug fixes, and uh, maybe I will do an 8.1.0 beta.2 this week to catch up on all the new stuff that we, since beta 1, which is now several weeks old. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Next up, I have notes from David, who says, I should take a time code. <laughs> um, David says, for the Feather RP2040 DVI, uh, testing on as many screens as possible, checking for overscan and resolution detection, helping Jose David with the true resolution of Pico DVI in issue 7894, testing turtle graphics, okay, um, testing Adafruit frame buffer, uh, KO, there's an issue 7898 trying to understand. I think this is the first time that Adafruit frame buffer was, has been tried to be used with the native frame buffers, um, so I replied there. Uh, PR to fix a typo in the Pico DVI code and understood how to change the Pico DVI resolution by not using board.display. This should be in a guide as it is non-obvious. Um, and then regarding the TR cowbell, failure to remix the working example because I don't master async IO yet. So I need to le read a learn guide for Dan and watch Foamy, Foamy Guy's stream on the topic. Unrelated to CircuitPython, I uh, got the Feather RP2040 USB host. Nothing yet, waiting for my IntelliKey from eBay. Uh, got some non-COVID virus that made me sleep most of the weekend and prevented me from talking too much for the moment. And I hope you feel better. I, I understand how getting COVID and non-COVID stuff is, uh, you know, being sick is no fun. Okay, uh, next up we'll see if DJ Devon 3s mic is working. And still don't hear you. So again, uh, feel free to interrupt me if you figure it out. Otherwise, I'm happy to read it off. Um, okay, so DJ Devon 3 made a short YouTube video demo of the Whizbang sewer bot. Roll change. No, you're still marked as CircuitPythonistas. I don't think that's it. Um, maybe check your input setting. Um, Figured out a way to pipe the first person camera view to OBS using a cheap composite AV to USB 2.0 product. Looks like 1980 VCR quality with horrible scan lines. I do not recommend it. Uh, we'll look into better methods. Started designing a 250 millimeter ring shaped PCB with WS2812B LEDs, aka NeoPixels, as a replacement for my workshop lamp that started to flicker and now puts out half the light it used to. I will. Uh, it will have a feather as a lighting controller and a relay feather wing to turn off and on the 12 volt fume extractor, making the project 100% CircuitPython. Started 3D modeling a custom watertight shell for the 3 inch by 2 inch sewer bot. Ordered a professional RC transmitter slash receiver kit that has a range of about a half mile. Not interested in the range, I want the additional signal strength bouncing around plumbing pipes to minimize risk of losing signal with the bot. Tried and failed to write my first CircuitPython library subclass using the IS31 FL3741 library. We'll take a shot, uh, take another shot at it this week. And do you have any other comments, DJ Devon3? I think you got your mic working. Nope, that's it. Yay, we can hear you. Glad you figured it out. Uh, all right, next up is Foamy Guy. All right, uh, thank you, Scott. Um... Last week, um, I was doing some library reviews and testing, mostly centered around web stuff uh, for the past week or so. 
went back through another uh, round on the Ethernet PR that's open and did some testing there and uploaded some new logs and things. Um, the other major one was in the HTTP server library. Uh, there were a couple of different PRs in there, including the one mentioned before. Um, and then a couple other smaller like type annotations and things like that sprinkled throughout a few other libraries. Um, I tested and submitted a fix for that SI7021 sensor um, so that it will work on Raspberry Pi using Blinka. Um, uh, in that same context, on the Raspberry Pi with Blinka, I have been working on this uh, data server project that is a web application that can store kind of arbitrary readings like from sensors and things like that and then show it back to the user uh, with some basic dashboards. I made some good progress on that this week uh, by getting all of the necessary functionality into the front end, uh, as well as a way to post data into the server from other sensors. And I've um, even made successful posts from a, a separate feather uh, at this point, so that's coming along nicely. Um, I have a super basic hard-coded dashboard, and I've been uh, brainstorming and tinkering and trying to think of how I want to try to change the dashboard to be user definable, but not uh, introduce too much complexity. So that's on my plate for the upcoming week. Um, a couple of fixes inside Display.io and in the core that I worked on, uh, one was removing some unnecessary operation inside uh, Vector.io that raised a warning if you have a new enough, I assume new uh, enough version of GCC. Uh, and then another one was a minimum size check on the size of the terminal, uh, which was also interesting because I had never um, actually just used terminal IO uh, terminal class before. I know it's used by like serial console output in REPL, but um, I've never seen user code that does that. So that was interesting to get a chance to play around with as well. Uh, and that's what I've got. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Uh, next up, I have notes from Jose David. Who says, where's my, where's my cursor? Um, Jose David says, testing DVI support mostly. I need to go back and test DVI with a display text library. Next up, we have no notes from <clears throat> Mark, aka Gambler21, who says, uh, PR for on disk GIF palette support out almost halves memory usage, but refresh rate can be slower. Um, next up, we have Neradox notes. who says, publish some of the libraries I've been making to the community bundle. The Absolute Mouse for Adafruit HID, thanks to David Glaub. Uh, driver for the I2C M5 stack unit 8 angle 8 encoder devices. Nice breakouts with rotating stuff and RGB LEDs. No I2C pull-ups, though. A driver for a TM1637 7 segment 6 digit display from a bit banged Arduino driver, probably generalizable to other displays using, using that chip. The MCP23017 scanner that scans direct pins or a key keyboard matrix using bulk write and reads and exposing an event queue like the keypad module. The multi-keypad module that abstracts multiple keypad instances or compatible as above into a single event queue. And yes, I think on this GIF palette is new. Um which means that your, your, the buffer of your GIF frame is smaller than it used to be. Um, it can be 8 bits instead of 16 bits. All right, last up, we have notes from Tectric. Uh, who's at PyCon? Um, Tectric writes, uh, last week, PyCon 2023. So excited to have returned this year and very excited for Pittsburgh next year. Helping out with the dev sprints on site today and then flying back to Boston to continue assisting remotely. This week, uh, helping out with dev sprints on site today and then flying back to Boston, the same thing you just said, and then planning on some possible changes that Kat and I, Katney and I discussed at PyCon regarding the Learn Guide repo. And with that, uh, we're done with status reports. So thank you to everybody. Um, really appreciate to hear what everything, everyone's working on. So last up, we have uh, an in the weeds section. This is a chance for us to have any longer form sorts of discussions. Um, and and make some decisions generally, or or uh, figure out what to do next. Um, so we have one topic in here, and I'm going to hand it over to Foamy Guy to introduce it. 
Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, this is a PR. I'll drop a link over in the chat as well that's open in one of the libraries. This person has um, basically submitted some code that they adapted from a pre-existing, I think, C++ example that was released by the manufacturer of this device. And that code was licensed under um, BSD3, I think it was. Um, but the general kind of question here is essentially like, is that okay for us to accept uh, code with that license? And then uh, if so, is there anything kind of special that needs to be done around reuse? I know it's like add the license file inside the directory for it and then put the header that has the right uh, syntax that tells it which one it is. Um, but I don't know if there's anything beyond that because I've never dealt with anything that added code that would need a separate license than what was already there. I haven't either. <laughs> So I think you're on the right track. I mean, I think the BSD license, the BOSS license is just a, a derivative of the BSD license. So it's very permissive license. So I don't think there should be any problem as long as you just add another SPDX license identifier. Okay. I will work on getting that bit straightened out and getting reuse happy with the, uh, with the actions and all of that. I just didn't want to jump in and start on it um, before checking in to see if that was a thing we could the, accept. The problem is really with GPL style license, oh, okay. usually. I'll keep that one in mind. Thank yeah. you. All right. That was a quick one. Uh, thank you all um, for in the weeds. Um, and now I will take a time code for wrap-up and then switch over to the info that we need for the wrap-up. Um, this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for April 24th, uh, 2023. Thank you all to everyone who participated, whether uh, in person or through the Nuzlocke. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. <laughs> the cat wants to be let out. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Uh, the next meeting, let me just double check, um, is next week at 11 a.m. So that's May 1st at the normal time. Um, don't know if you can hear her. Um, yep, so next week is Monday at usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Uh, to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. Uh, we hope to see you all next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Have a great week. <laughs>